Chers auditeurs, Dear listeners, bonjour. Welcome in Comme d'Archi Podcast Season 3. Saison 3 dans le monde fascinant des architectes. And in the architectural projects. Je suis Anne-Charlotte de Ponte, passionnée d'architecture et docteur des universités en histoire de l'archi. I am one of the spokespersons of Anne Charlotte, who is a PhD in architecture history. Merci. Thank you. D'être avec moi aujourd'hui. To be with us today. Et And maintenant, now, lundi en français, place au talent. And Wednesday, let's talk projects. In English, of course. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, good morning. This is Esther on behalf of Anne-Charlotte. It's a pleasure to see you again in season 3 of Comme d'Archi episode 83, with a brief presentation of the French studio Sana Balde, and above all, it's a typical project for the 2024 Olympic Games and its heritage, in their own words. In 2018, Anna Sana and Delphine Valde established Le Studio Sana Valde with the intention of bringing architecture and urban life together. Anna Sana is a design architect with proven experience in commercial, residential architecture, as well as in equipment and interior design. Delphine Balde is an urban planner architect who has developed various urban projects and territorial strategies. After working for over a decade as partner and project manager for François Leclerc and Jacques Ferrier, they decided to bring their worlds together. It is through their shared passion for dance that they explore the relationship between space, body and the city, bringing city and architecture closer together to support social and environmental transformations. They are also very committed to teaching and active in community life, Les Ateliers de Sergi, a trademark that enriches their work and convictions. Anna Sana graduated from La Sapienza, the architecture school of Rome, in 2003 and studied during one year in Versailles. She collaborated as well with the Aga Khan Development Network, AKDN, in Cairo, in Egypt, before joining in 2005 Jacques Ferrier Architecture's team. Her collaboration with Jacques Ferrier for more than 13 years has enabled her with a solid experience in tertiary project. Grand Central Saint-Lazare, headquarters of the Champagne Pieper and Charles Heitzig, headquarters of Hachette Livre, Le Guimet. She was in charge of major projects like the aquatic park Aqualagon. Her skill as an architect designer has led her to numerous interior and furniture projects at Jacques Ferrier Architecture. Delphine Balde graduated in 2003 at l'École Nationale Supérieure d'Architecture de Versailles and completed her education with an urbanistic program at the EPFL in 2015, Moc Ville Africaine. Seeking to have international experience, she had the opportunity to work in Amsterdam for the Tana Conco office. Afterwards, she joined François Leclerc's team, with whom she collaborated for more than 13 years. She especially developed the urbanism division and coordinated numerous urban projects in France, abroad and in the context of the Grand Paris. Meanwhile, she is a member of the Atelier de Maîtrise d'Oeuvre de Sergi Pontoise for 15 years and frequently leads workshops in West Africa. She is currently teaching at the Urbanistic Institute of Reims and she takes part in the Master Stratégie Territoriale for Sciences Po École Urbaine. Now, let's see together the project they have chosen to talk about. The House of the French Federation of Canoë Kayak and Paddle Sports, or in French, Maison de la Fédération Française de Canoë Kayak et Sport de Paguet, in Versiomane. A project made in partnership with Pola Paysage. It will be delivered in 2023. Establishing the totem of the Canoe Kayak and Paddle Sports Federation on the largest artificial whitewater course in Europe and joining in the celebration of sports during the 2024 Summer Paralympics is not only an opportunity to strengthen the influence of the FFCK, but also one to affirm the federal project with its members. The values associated with paddle sports, commitment, friendship, solidarity, openness, pursuit of excellence and transmission are very closely related to the ambitions of our architectural approach rooted in its territory that dialogues with its inhabitants. In addition, the current health crisis leads us to develop more resilient and inclusive projects capable of responding to new ways of working, new lifestyles, for regular and exceptional occasions. 
The design of this CK and Paddle Sports House is one of a doing together project, of a team project. The notion of house is essential in terms of being welcoming, welcoming to the 2024 Summer Paralympics, welcoming the public, welcoming its members and licenses. The house is a place that reinforces a sense of belonging while being open to others and capable of hosting international events. The particularity of a federation that brings together several disciplines that are practiced in different environments, calm and white waters as well as the sea, is an asset to highlight in the project. This house is capable of integrating high-performance sports, leisure and tourism sports, health and well-being sports and handicap sports. This full-circle sporting identity is our starting point to tell the story of this house, which will be implemented in the Versirman nautical base, delivered in June 2019. Environmental challenges have become unavoidable for all actors in urban development, especially in a context of crisis like the one we are going through. The virtues of sustainable urban planning and the strong and ambitious intentions in terms of energy management, mobility and the bioclimatic landscape are no longer a matter to be demonstrated. Today, global warming is widely perceptible and urban and architectural developments must make it possible to reduce its effects already from their design, as will the FFCK house. The environmental excellence of this project is based on the durability of the materials chosen, as well as the comfort brought by the island of freshness and its energy conservation. As a marker of this commitment, we suggest biosource materials such as wood. The new environment for the headquarters of the FFCK and Paddle Sports must meet the needs for flexibility demonstrated by the COVID crisis. The same space needs to be easily and sustainably adapted for physical distancing, as well as collective and individual work. This mix of uses in each space allows us to custom build the structure for a growing federation. About 30 kilometers from the heart of Paris, the Vert Base is the first operational facility for the 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games, where the canoeing and rowing events will be organized a high-quality achievement, and a landscaping that respects the environment and the biodiversity of the Vertorsi Leisure Island while meeting Olympic standards. Our house must fall within these same standards. Our proposal intends to assert a strong identity at the entrance to the site while delicately integrating it to the surrounding urban contexts. We propose a simple but remarkable architecture. It is a landscape architecture that fits into the topography of the site and follows the spirit of the project carried out by Auer Weber and Agence de Ver. Located on the roundabout of Route de Torcy, raising its silhouette in the landscape, its presence will completely transform the entrance to the nautical site. It will become an emblem, a meeting place. Here, the outdoors is as important as the indoors. Events can be organized both indoors and in a series of outdoor spaces such as the rooftop, the garden patio and the terraces, which include some protected areas to cater for all weather conditions. For us, architecture is not only a space that hosts, it must do much more. It must stimulate the collective, promote excellence and well-being, and it must guide all generations of our society towards a more social and environmental awareness. It is a house catalyst of our values that we have imagined for the Federation, a place that reveals the great landscape and which brings together passionate people. To host the 2024 Paralympics will mark the celebration of the strong links between the Federation and Olympism on a site with a 5-hectare park and HQE facilities. Our design of this landscaped building, open to the city, was inspired by the idea of a house that reveals the hidden athlete within us and what that puts sports at the heart of our daily lives. A Contemporary Landmark The new FFCK headquarters presents itself as a contemporary landmark within the existing landscape. Far from separating it from the existing buildings, the project creates a dialogue between them through its facade and roof that prolong those of the nautical base, evoking a shared vision. The strong elements of the CK house a building integrated into the environment, a panoramic view towards the lake, a green roof that recalls the surrounding landscape, 
The forecourt patio, both open to the city but protected from nuisances. A transparent ground floor in continuity with the external garden. The new building is not a form in which the program must bend, but on the contrary a tool to work with. It combines the solemnity of the headquarters of a federation such as the FFCK and the calm and comfort of an environment conducive to the human activities that take place there daily. By favoring its use and being attentive to its landscaping purpose, it falls outside of passing fashion while clearly being of its time. It intends to be a generous and useful place. A flexible program The building follows the shape of the site, suspended in a wooded landscape. The interior spaces are organized around a patio. The building rises high to give way to a four-meter ground floor in continuity with the patio garden. It houses the reception hall, shared spaces and guest parking. A double-height hall offers surprising perspectives both to the patio and the surrounding landscape. We choose to develop the volume upwards to allow for unobstructed views towards the lake. The ground floor brings together the program in ERP in connection with the public spaces. In the center, the patio functions as a public square, both protected and open to the nautical base. Composed of landscaped terraces and a long balcony, it is a preserved and calm space ideal for all official events and for meeting with colleagues daily. The business quarters are found above. They are adjustable, allowing a wide variety of layouts. In the intent of fluidity and comfort, the space allows for different circulation possibilities and simple or progressive distributions, thus avoiding the monotony of long straight corridors. The needs of the Federation evolving, the additional 1,500 square meter volume on the ground floor used for parking lots will be suitable for conversion in phases 3 to 5 of the program. Multiple and fluid circulation The circulation is stimulating and offers a variety of passages, shortcuts, relaxation areas, many day shots and viewpoints of the surroundings, the terraces, the sky. It is a generous collective space, sometimes extended by terraces, where different atmospheres converge. All vehicle and pedestrian access comes from the access road to the nautical base. Motorized visitors are directed to the landscaped car park located to the west. Staff parking is at a reserved area below the building. Access for visitors and office staff is on the south side via a mineral forecourt between the reception hall and the embankment in the extension of the patio. The project is designed so that the forecourt is visible and identifiable from afar by pedestrians. It is a fundamental element which serves as a point of orientation and brings the headquarters to the scale of this vast site. A house around a patio. The mineral and planted patio extends into the reception hall. It is both the main space of the project and a remarkable interior space. A large open staircase provides access to the offices located mostly on the first floor and a few on the second. A transition and waiting space between the exterior and interior of the building, the hall is a majestic showcase for the new headquarters and can also become a place for exhibitions and screenings. The offices, organized on two levels, are crossing spaces between the street and the patio. Accessible through corridors bathed in natural light, they all benefit from outdoor views. In the center of the building, opening onto the patio are the open spaces and the meeting rooms. The more classic, closed offices are oriented outwards with very far views of the surrounding landscape. The landscape's views, the light brought by the vast openings inside the building, are a major element of the new headquarters atmosphere of serenity and comfort. The use of wood to constitute the structure, the curtain walls as well as an 80 cm spandrel with exterior insulation, gives a natural, warm and noble character to these living spaces. The facade is designed by a 2.7 m frame which incorporates a 0.67 opening. With the numerous windows, it shows the diversity of the programs, the reception of the events. All offices have direct lighting from windows and are naturally ventilated.
On the ground floor, close to the visitors' access, are found an area dedicated to the storage of the National Technical Committee, a lift, and an additional staircase to access to the Federation President's quarters. The first floor includes the Communication, Partnership, Events and Territories Division, the General Management, Administration, Financial and Human Resources Division, the Sports, Leisure and Development Division, the Competitive Sports Division, the National Institute of Sports and Paddle and the Meeting Rooms of the Political Division, which will be shared with the other divisions. The second floor caters for the Political Division and the President's Quarters. This floor also offers two terraces and an accessible green roof where cocktails and private receptions can take place in complete privacy with views of the entire site. The President's Quarters is a space that hosts private events and has therefore a private terrace and an independent entrance. The staging of the landscape. The landscape is an essential element in the DNA of this project. This house expresses itself through a strong relationship to the landscape, the surrounding nature and water. As a matter of fact, the site is characterized by the strong presence of water. It is framed by the Shells Channel, the Man River and the Lake of Versiomane in an alluvial plain. This is why our choice of location for the building fully integrates the existing landscape. Our sustainable approach is affirmed in this process as we start with what is already there and maximize its potential. The site already has a landscape, so we create our architecture with it. The elevation forms the base of the new building and allows a wide opening to the surroundings. In the center of the building, the patio is made up of two parts, an upper part which descends by vegetated terraces towards a lower part that circulates between islands of greenery and open out to the hall on the ground floor. It is a space for breaks and outdoor events, a garden oasis in the center of the building. The grassy terraces create altitude and provide seating spaces facing the center of the patio. Environmental approach The project is designed as a living space capable of ensuring long-term comfort for its public and minimizes upkeep and maintenance costs. The ground plan inscribes the project in the landscape with minimal excavation embankment to ensure a maximum respect of the local ecosystem and control of the carbon footprint of the construction, directly linked to the quantity of poured concrete. This ground plan maximizes access to natural light, an essential element of comfort and also a source of energy savings, less need for artificial lighting. First, the central patio is generously sized, well landscaped to become an island of freshness during the summer. The 12 meter width of the offices allow for good natural lighting of the office spaces and views to the outside at all points. In terms of thermal comfort, the major concern in today's world regards the summertime. Even if an active cooling system is planned, our intention is to offer a project where for a large part of the year you can dwell and work with the windows open. In connection with the site and the nearby vegetation, and in particular the freshness of the patio. Comfort openings are planned in a structured way for daily use at the discretion of the users, but also envisaged for night cooling. This, which entails zero energy cost, allows the natural mode to be extended and reduces the consumption of an active cooling system by up to 50% or even more depending on the devices put in place. Dear listeners, thank you for tuning in. Let's meet again next week for a new Kandashi in English. And until then, take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Julien Rebourg, sound engineer, who is collaborating with us today. Don't forget to tune in to our previews on Instagram at Comme d'Archie Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, don't hesitate to promote it by giving it five stars and a little comment on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast platform. And above all, subscribe to listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon. And until then, take care of yourself.